Okay, good morning everyone and uh, thank you all for uh, joining class. Today uh, I was not able to go to Bible college so I'm thank you for the in-person students uh, joining as well along with the online students. Welcome to class everyone. So can one of you please lead us in prayer? Anyone? Can I ask Shiv Kumar to lead us in prayer please? Shiv Kumar, can you lead us in prayer? Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Nina. Yes. Can you please lead us in prayer? Nina Santosh, you had your hand raised up, so I thought you are going to lead us in prayer. Father God, we thank you and we bless you for this day, Father. Father, we love you and we praise you, Lord. We submit ourselves unto your loving hands, Father. Help us to understand and uh, practically do this, all these things what we are hearing, Father God, in our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Nina. Okay, so today we'll uh, uh, continue looking at uh, chapter uh, uh, 3. Uh, we were talking about people uh, when we are ministering, uh, you know, Christian ministry or uh, building God's kingdom is all about people. Uh, sometimes we mistake Christian ministry to just be like building uh, organization or building churches or uh, uh, you know uh, doing um, uh, crusades or uh, you know different programs uh, but Christian ministry is all about uh, building people okay uh, uh, we know that, you know that Anand is it possible to please uh, mute your mic thank you Anand Okay, so uh, Christian ministry is uh, not just about writing books or writing songs or how many churches we built or, uh, you know, how many places we've um, gone and done mission work. It's not about uh, how many crusades and uh, programs we conducted, but Christian ministry is all about ministering to people. And all of the others, what I just mentioned just now, all of that is actually to build uh, people uh, you know, into Christ's likeness, um, bring them from darkness into his uh, marvelous light, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, build them up, uh, to, uh, to lead them into uh, a life transforming, uh, you know, encounter with Christ where they are uh, becoming more uh, like Christ, uh, discipling them, uh, building them up in the ways of the Lord, maturing them in the ways and in the faith uh, uh, in their Christian walk with uh, God. So that is all about uh, Christian ministry. Christian ministry is basically building people in the faith, building them in the word, uh, building them to be more like Christ. So we're looking at uh, various areas. Um, even as uh, we minister to people, what are some of the things that we need uh, to keep in mind? Okay. So we looked at uh, some of them uh, last week. Um, so we'll continue. Uh, on and I think it's uh, I can't tell you the page number because it's different on the PDF and it's uh, different I think for some of you who are uh, following the the recent uh, publication of this book I have the old publication so the uh, pages vary but um, uh, we are on this point where we're talking about overcoming personal insecurities okay uh, we all as we journey on in life from the very from you know from the time of uh, uh, when we are kids and we grow up, you know, we all grow up with various kinds of insecurities because of various situations in our life. And if those insecurities are not uh, dealt with, you know, it uh, manifests itself in several ways, even as we are, uh, you know, working or ministering in God's kingdom, in his field, in his vineyard. Um, so, you know, if you are insecure, basically, um, 
you know you come to a place where uh, you know you're in you become insecure even as your identity in christ as a child of god uh, and then you begin to you know uh, form an identity that you are uh, a minister because you're not secure in yourself with who you are in christ then you have to have all your you know if people don't address you with your uh, full name with your titles with your degrees if they don't give you uh, you know a place of uh, prominence uh, in meetings, if you don't get the uh, front row, or if you don't get the place on uh, on the platform, on the podium, uh, you get uh, uh, angry, you get offended because you uh, you know uh, you're overlooked, uh, you are unnoticed, and basically all this arises from your insecurity. But if you know who you are in Christ, irrespective of whether people give you uh, the highest place of uh, you know the the most important prominent place of seating or uh, you know whether they address you with all of your titles and uh, your full name and give you all that uh, honor you know uh, uh, you know irrespective of them whether they do it or not it does not matter to you because in your identity is secure of who you are in Christ. So all of these honor by men does not really, or women does not really matter to you uh, because you are secure in your identity, in your calling and who you are in uh, Christ. You know, if you are insecure also, uh, you know, um, uh, you're insecure that other people are getting all the attention. Uh, suppose, uh, you know, if you're working in a ministry, there are other men and women of God, and uh, they are getting the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, uh, you know, they all the privileges, they're getting the honor, they are applauded. And when it happens, you become somewhere insecure, and then you begin to, you know, become jealous, you, uh, pride comes in, pride sets in, uh, there's jealousy, hate, and then uh, you are basically gossiping about that person to put that person down, uh, you know, uh, backbiting about that person to the other colleagues, to the other ministers, or uh, you're basically, when you are, uh, preaching or you're teaching you're trying to magnify yourself you're you're basically saying you know um, uh, in your sermons how anointed you are as a person how powerful you are and then you try to uh, you know put down other ministers or men and women of God in the city because you don't want uh, the people in your church or you don't want people in your organization to go to and minister with other organization with other men and women of God so you put other ministers uh, down you talk about how uh, you know some of the sins that they have committed or uh, uh, you know uh, you can say that they're even teaching a wrong teaching so don't go to that church um, and also you know um, uh, you come to a place where uh, you are uh, you know uh, not giving opportunities for other ministers, men and women of God. For example, if you're a senior pastor in the church and there's a junior pastor who's just come in and uh, you know he's uh, powerfully being used by God, anointed, uh, his style of preaching everybody likes. And so you're becoming very insecure as a senior pastor. And so what you do is, uh, you know, you basically don't give that uh, the junior pastor or the associate pastor, the privileges of preaching or teaching. Uh, you just give them some, you know, sideline job to do. But the main things you do so that uh, you are portrayed or you're seen as someone who is uh, a preacher and teacher and there's no one better than um, you. So all of these, uh, you know, insecurities rise up um, within ourselves because of uh, you know some of the insecurities that we have faced in life which we have not uh, dealt with and it's manifested in all of these um, uh, ways and sometimes we can even you know boast about from the pulpit uh, how we are connected to men and women of god around the world uh, you know uh, 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 how we are under their leadership, uh, how we are under their uh, uh, spiritual covering. Uh, and so people can look at us and say, wow, you know, big man of God, a big, great woman of God. Uh, but all that is basically showing our insecurity. So what we need to do is we need uh, to deal with some of the uh, insecurities that we have within ourselves, uh, which, you know, can uh, would have uh, uh, risen out of... Uh, you know, uh, times when even when we were children, you know, when we were overlooked by our parents, our parents not give us the attention, they liked uh, our other siblings or other brothers and sisters more than us, or how our, our uh, because we were not good in school, 
uh, in studies in school and teachers put us down uh, and you know or we've seen we faced uh, uh, several failures in life where um, we've not been able to um, overcome all of those things and those manifest as insecurities in some of these ways that I've just mentioned so what we need to do is we need to um, you know, um, uh, ask God, uh, you know, and um, uh, ask the Holy Spirit to deal with those areas and to help us overcome those uh, areas. The next thing is don't provide a platform for people with personal agendas. Now, you know, uh, whether it's uh, a Bible study group or whether it's a church setup or whether it's a ministry uh, or you're in a mission field, you know, uh, people come in and they want to serve God, but some of them come with pure motives some uh, the pure motives the pure heart some of them come with imp uh, improper motives uh, you know they have their own personal agendas in their hearts in their minds uh, so before we give a response uh, made uh, main leadership roles or responsibilities uh, to people who want to you know help out or who want to minister uh, it's it's good to test people okay uh, that's what paul tells timothy in first timothy chapter 3 verse 10 says but let those also first be tested then let them serve as deacons being found blameless so uh, basically uh, paul is writing to timothy in in this chapter and he's telling him about uh, you know uh, what kind of people you need to choose as leaders as deacons as uh, ministers in the church and he's giving him uh, all of these uh, the criteria we looked at it um, in the previous chapters uh, so he's, you know, basically uh, telling him that before you make somebody a deacon, deacon is somebody which is basically like, uh, you know, serving uh, uh, in any ministry team. We, now we call them as volunteers. You know, uh, the other word for deacon is servants uh, in the Bible. Uh, and uh, so basically, you know, those who are ministering, volunteering uh, in different fields. So he says, basically, test them first. So what are the areas that we need to test them? Uh, you know, test to see if they are, uh, you know, just give them small leadership, uh, small responsibilities. Don't give them any titles or, uh, uh, you know, leadership roles and see if they're being faithful, if they're committed, if they're working with uh, the rest of them together as a team, uh, they align to the vision vision and direction of the leadership they're not doing their own thing um, you know um, uh, they're willing to humble themselves to listen to work together as a team uh, in unity in oneness uh, and then when you look at their life and their ministry and their example that they're setting uh, their relationship with other people uh, whether they're following the vision and the direction of the leadership of the uh, you know whichever group uh, then you know you know you can uh, you can entrust them with the bigger responsibilities with bigger roles you can even give them a, a title so best you know first test people uh, before you give them a leadership roles and uh, uh, responsibilities okay uh, there are people who come in with different kind of wrong uh, motives and agendas it's basically they come uh you know uh, saying that they want to volunteer and serve um but you know uh they want to use this uh, as a means to be recognized so that they can launch out their own ministry, they can uh, launch out their own church, uh, they can promote their own personal uh, ministry or business. Now, people, different people come to church, they have their own uh, ministries, they have their own businesses. So uh, they come into church and then they say, okay, this is a good potential church where I can get many people, uh, you know, uh, to buy my products or be part of my business business or be part of my own personal ministry so they try to connect with people they come uh, they want to serve in church and they want to come into leadership roles and responsibilities and slowly we see that they're using this as a means to promote their own personal ministries and uh, their own business now uh, you know that is uh, uh, not a correct motive not a correct agenda which they are really serving in Christ so uh, in the church uh, and uh, serving Christ through the church or the ministry that you are doing. So it's better for us to test people, uh, see them, because, uh, you know, all of this has happened in church. Uh, there are numerous examples I've seen myself, uh, you know, and so it's important for us to first know the act, uh, 
the motives, the agendas of people, why they want to serve, give them small, uh, uh, you know, uh, roles. And then if they are faithful and sincere, they're just not looking for position and titles and to promote their own things, then you can give them bigger leadership roles and responsibilities. The next thing is don't fight uh, what you don't uh, do not understand. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it says here that um, in John chapter 3 verse 8, the wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but it, you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone born of the Spirit. So basically, uh, Jesus here talking to Nicodemus uh, when he wants to be born again. So he's saying that the Holy Spirit is like a wind, just like the wind. We do not know where it's coming from, where it's going. The same way, you know, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit works in different ways, ways uh, you know, we know that the Holy Spirit, uh, whatever he does, is in accordance with the written word of God. Whatever God does, does not uh, violate his word, does not go against uh, scripture. Okay, but we uh, saying that uh, uh, we can also say that we cannot put God in a box, which means we cannot confine God to his word. Of course, God does not negate his word. He does not go against his word. Whatever he says, uh, you know, we can prove it in his word. Uh, but there are times when, you know, God can, uh, uh, you know, work in ways or the Holy Spirit can manifest in ways that we can, uh, we never expected. Um, uh, you know, sometimes God can use people that we have not even uh, thought of, we've not even expected. Uh, God can work or manifest in uh, several different ways, which is not, we don't even see in uh, scripture. And what do we do when, uh, when we see this, we don't fight it. Uh, we don't say that it is, uh, you know, what the people are doing or what is happening in that church or what the move of God in that place is wrong. Uh, that's uh, that's not the way that we need to, uh, uh, you know, react. Um, but we need to know that, you know, the Holy Spirit can work in unusual ways and unexpected ways. He can manifest in unusual and unexpected ways. So we don't criticize uh, because uh, we don't understand, uh, you know, and we don't find it in scripture or it does not fit our way of doing things or our way of uh, uh, how we expect God to do things. So what do we uh, uh, do at such times? We just uh, watch and wait. If it is, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, if it is the work of God, then there it, it will bear fruit. If it's not the work of God, then it will slowly, uh, if it's just uh, coming out of uh, you know, fleshly zeal or um, it's a, a flesh man-made manifestation, then it will be something that will fade away. There will be no fruit. Uh, none of them will uh, benefit. Uh, and one good scripture example that we have is here in Acts chapter 5, uh, when uh, the disciples, the apostles were brought before the council and they were said, they, uh, they said to them, uh, uh, you know, you're not supposed to preach and teach and do science, miracles, wonders uh, uh, in the name of Jesus. And uh, they said, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, you judge for yourself. The apostles said uh, to the people in the council, the Pharisees that were there, uh, you know, you judge for yourself whether we should obey God or men. And then, they, you know, uh, uh, there was a big uproar in the council. And uh, they put uh, out the apostles and only the people of the council, the Pharisees, the Sadducees were all there. And there was a Pharisee named uh, Gamaliel, you know, uh, who was a teacher of the law. He was well respected uh, uh, by the people. And uh, he says this, you know, he says, men of Israel, take heed for yourself uh, what uh, you intend to do regarding this men. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this, if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But it, if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be uh, found to find uh, to fight against God. So what this wise man Gamaliel say, is saying here is, uh, hey, listen to me, you know, don't uh, fight among yourselves. Uh, you know, uh, if this is... Um, uh, you know, and don't uh, have anything to do with these men. Just let them be alone. Uh, you know, if it is something of the flesh, is something of their own thing that they have started, uh, you know, if it is a movement of a man-made movement, then we know that it will not last too long. 
okay uh, and he gives an example of a man who just came up and uh, there was an uprising of a man and everybody were following him but what happened you know that man just fell up uh, he just fell away and you know the whole group uh, broke apart so he says this will also happen if it is of man but if this is of god then you know uh, you will find yourself fighting against god and hence he says you know um, uh, don't uh, fight against these men just wait and watch if it is of uh, if it's something that's man made it will not last you just fall away but if it is something of uh, god then you know you can't fight god okay uh, so the same principle we can apply uh, in this context you know when you don't understand things some things are happening in the church it's a move of god there is some manifestations of the holy spirit and you say oh it's not biblical it's not found anywhere in the bible you know uh, if it is of man then you know uh, wait and watch for the fruit you know uh, uh, because god says you know uh, uh, whatever is uh, is uh, made of hay and straw you know if it's man-made it'll be like man or made of hay and straw and you know when uh, the test of time comes it will be burned by uh, fire but whatever is of god it will stand for eternity so watch the fruits and uh, you know uh, that way so you will know whether this uh, is a move of the holy spirit a manifestation of the holy spirit or if it's just a fleshly man-made uh, manifestation okay some things people say and do are not worth your uh, uh, time uh, like it says in ecclesiastes chapter 7 verses 21 and 22 can somebody read that please ecclesiastes chapter 7 verses 21 and 22 anyone also do not take in heart everything people say let your heart your servant cause cursing you for many times also your own heart has known that even you have cursed others thank you nina so here it says uh, do not take to heart everything that uh, people uh, say okay uh, and also, if you look at uh, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 3, it says it's honorable for a man to stop striving since any fool can start a uh, quarrel. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, when we are working with people, we know Christian ministry or kingdom building is all about people, but the greatest challenge uh, are people uh, themselves you know working with people working along with people uh, is a great uh, challenge okay so even as uh, you serve people you know you'll uh, we realize that we cannot control them uh, we uh, we cannot control we are not responsible for their attitudes for their behavior uh, for the choices and the decisions um, uh, that they make uh, you know uh, people are uh, you know quickly uh, they people quickly applaud you they uh, uh, they say nice things but you know the next day they can turn around and they can retaliate they can criticize uh, they forget um, you know um, all of the you know uh, what you have invested into their lives uh, how you have uh, ministered to them uh, you know the support and the encouragement you have given to them uh, all of that they can just forget in a moment in a day they can you know they can suddenly criticize you they can point out your flaws and your shortcomings um, and you know at such times uh, we need to be strong yes there are times that when you know when people criticize us they point out to our flaws and our shortcomings uh, we need to take that we need to uh, correct ourselves uh, that is just going to help uh, us as a person uh, to become more better okay uh, so that uh, we can serve God in a better way um, uh, we can become more Christ-like uh, we can serve people we can minister to them in a better way when we are willing to take criticisms check ourselves correct ourselves um, but you know there are times when people unnecessarily criticize you know uh, they retaliate they just uh, you know we know that they are behind our back they are um, you know backbiting behind us and uh, uh, they are uh, you know uh, basically uh, criticizing us uh, there's nothing that we can do you know don't uh, 
quarrel, don't fight against them because it says it's honorable for a man to stop striving. Don't quarrel, uh, only a fool will start a quarrel. Okay, so uh, don't quarrel with them. Uh, you know, uh, just be focused on uh, the call of God. Uh, you know, even as uh, things happen, just uh, give it up to God. And, you know, God will take care of things because it is his vineyard. It is his field. It is his kingdom. He knows, uh, you know, who is for him, who is against him, who is, uh, uh, you know, for the work of God, who is doing things that uh, is going to bring strife and division. And when God steps in, when you hand it over to God, when God steps in and fights your battle, you know, things just go very smoothly, unhindered. You know, but if you if you try to, you know, meddle with things, if you try to, you know, get in and try to, uh, you know, uh, argue or uh, discuss things or uh, uh, and all of that, it'll, you know, make things even worse, it'll worsen things, uh, you know, there'll be strife, there will be division, unnecessary uh, waste of your time and energy. Uh, so you just focus on the call of God and, you know, uh, continue strong in what God has called you and God will take care of uh, uh, such people. So don't retaliate, don't quarrel, uh, you know, uh, at times we try to defend ourselves ourselves uh, don't do that as well just learn to pray and release all of those feelings those hurt to the lord and keep moving um, uh, ahead for what to what god has called you uh, to do i think this is um, this is something that i have uh, really followed i have done uh, I've always told the, god, uh, uh, the lord that you know i don't have the time and energy to fight people uh, uh, you just take care of them god and i've just seen god just beautifully take care uh, you know, uh, either move them out of the team or, you know, basically um, uh, build up my relationship. They're able to see uh, what I'm doing, why I'm doing what I'm doing. They're able to see uh, God's plan and purpose in everything. And they just come and realign uh, themselves. But it's just wonderful to see how God works and fights your uh, battle uh, for them for you okay uh when people give you feedback uh you know just take whatever is necessary whatever is unnecessary leave it don't get moved by what uh, uh, people say like we just uh, uh, read here uh, do not take to heart everything that people uh, say okay the next thing is leave offenses behind it's not worth carrying them uh, with you. A uh, good example here we see is in Galatians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. Um, uh, can somebody read that, please? Galatians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. Anyone can read Galatians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, please? I'm afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured me at all. Thank you, Sri Radha. Uh, so here we see, uh, you know, um, Paul saying, uh, you know, uh, writing to the church at Galatia, and uh, this is a church that uh, he has basically labored in bringing them to the faith. Uh, and, uh, you know, now they are being easily swayed by Paul. Uh, other people, um, you know, uh, basically uh, Jews who have uh, become believers now and they're trying to bring in, uh, uh, you know, uh, telling the people that you have to keep the law, you have to keep some of the observance of the law, uh, the circumcision of the flesh and uh, follow other rituals and things like that. And uh, the people at Galatia, the churches, the believers at Galatia are easily, you know, buying that, they're swaying towards that. And... Um, uh, you know, and Paul is writing to them and he's saying that, um, you know, uh, I'm afraid for you lest I have labored for you in uh, vain. OK, uh, he's taught them that all of these uh, keeping the law, keeping the rituals, all of this uh, in the new covenant really does not uh, matter. What matters is uh, your faith. You're, uh, you're, you're made righteous by your faith, just like Abraham 
uh, was uh, even before the law was given was made righteous by his faith because uh, he put his faith and trust uh, in God and so he says that you know uh, all that I've labored seems to be in vain because now you are buying into these uh, 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 you know what these uh, Jewish uh, believers are telling you of keeping the law uh, of keeping the Old Testament practices of the law and uh, but Paul is saying that uh, you know, uh, in spite of me teaching you and helping and building you in the faith um, and, you know, being a model to you uh, as well so that you can follow my lifestyle, uh, my way of living, uh, he says, you know, uh, you have not injured me at all even though he's saddened in his heart even as, even though he's heartbroken even as he's disappointed uh, but he says you know you have not injured me at uh, uh, all that means he's telling the uh, you know i'm not offended uh, you have cost me nothing to get hurt uh, and that is so wonderful okay uh, for a man to say that you have not injured me at all but what you're doing is wrong but he's saying you have not hurt me uh, and also you know we see that uh, uh, in another instance you know um, Paul makes uh, a mistake you know in the, in the one of the missionary journeys the first missionary journey when they go uh, Paul and Barnabas go on the, the first missionary journey they take along with them uh, John Mark who is uh, Barnabas's cousin and um, as, you know uh, somewhere during the first missionary journey John Mark says he does not he's not interested in continuing with them uh, so he uh, says he's not going to be part of their uh, missionary journey anymore and then he stays back and this uh, greatly offends uh, uh, Paul he's dis not only disappointed but he's he feels offended uh, and then we see that uh, when they go on the second missionary journey uh, you know Paul uh, uh, tells Barnabas okay let's set sail to uh, let's go on our second missionary journey and Barnabas says you know we'll take uh, my cousin John Mark and uh, Paul says no it comes to such a serious uh, uh, you know uh, uh, strife among them that you know uh, uh, Paul says no and Barnabas says no we will take him and it becomes like a divide between them it becomes a division and hence uh, Barnabas says he will go separately with John Mark on his own missionary journey and Paul takes Silas and goes along with him in the second um, missionary journey but we see later on that uh, you know Paul realizes his mistake and he corrects uh, himself and uh, we see that you know he takes John Mark uh, later on he realizes that uh, you know John Mark was not being lazy or he's not uh, you know compromising his um, call or uh, you know it's not being complacent but there was some uh, genuine specific reason why he did not want to continue with them on that missionary journey uh, later on he sees uh, uh, you know John Mark's zeal his passion for the Lord and uh, he takes him back uh, in uh, in his team so John Mark continues to minister along with Paul and we see in second Timothy um, uh, 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 Paul writing to Timothy says get Mark and bring him with you for he's useful uh, to me in the uh, ministry and um, uh, we also see that um, he talks about uh, John Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. Uh, you know, he says, uh, when he comes, welcome him. When he's writing the, uh, the the letter of Colossians to the church at Colossae, so we see that you know when Paul. Uh, uh, knows his mistake is able to correct it uh, and he's uh, able to uh, you know uh, work along with uh, John Mark minister along with him see his potential and also uh, work uh, minister along with him for the extension and the building of God's uh, kingdom uh, so two examples that we see here you know there are times when um, you know when we are building up people and they go away from the faith or when they do things um, uh, that greatly disappoint us we shouldn't take it uh, very personal uh, and Paul says you've not injured me at all but we continue to minister to them continue to build them up in the faith and at times when we uh, judge people wrongly uh, and when we see their potential we need to correct uh, ourselves and also you know continue to uh, minister along with them and uh, use their gifts and talents for the extension and the building of God's uh, kingdom.
okay uh, people grow people change uh, so be ready to let go of them you know people uh, some people journey with us for a season some people journey um, for seasons together um, and a few of them will journey along you with you from start to finish um, but you know uh, different people at different times uh, you know who we have uh, labored for them in the Lord we have brought them up in the faith we have journeyed along with them we have built them up uh, you know uh, we have uh, trained them uh, the skills the gifts they ha they have uh, they have uh, you know we have released them into different roles and functions uh, in the church or in your ministry or uh, in your mission organization wherever you are serving and then it comes a time where uh, you know they want to um, uh, go out and venture out and do their own ministry start their own ministry or go to another place and start a, their own work or business or they want to go to some other church you know um, uh, we at those times we don't want to let go of people we feel that you know uh, hey we have invested in your life you know we have taught you we have built you up in the faith uh, if it was not for me you would have been nowhere you wouldn't even know your giftings your calling uh, and all of that uh, so we expect them to um, you know be with us for the rest of our lives uh, well that is not a, a right uh, heart attitude that is uh, bossing with people that is controlling people that is being authoritative of people but just as we lovingly welcome people into our team uh, into our group um, when they want to leave you know just be happy to release them let them go um, you know don't hold on to people uh, you know uh, uh, sometimes we feel that uh, you know we've labored for them they have to labor for us um, you know we have feel that that attachment to them uh, we also feel that when they leave and go who will fill up their uh, role uh, there'll be a gap who will fill it up you know all of this is ungodly soulish uh, uh, attachments uh, and uh, this is something that is not spiritual this will hinder the work of God uh, so we need to guard ourselves uh, you know uh, as uh, uh, from such things uh, we need to let go of people uh, just bless them send them away with joy wherever the Lord is leading them um, and if they come back later on you know welcome back in, uh, them into your team don't say hey you left us and went and now you didn't uh, do well in that place and you're coming back and uh, say okay I'll teach him a lesson or I teach her a lesson I will not uh, uh, you know give them any roles of responsibilities uh, no we shouldn't do that when they come back welcome them back uh, but when they want to go you know, just send them with a blessing with a joy just release them uh, knowing that you know God will bring somebody else it's God's vineyard it's God's field what you're doing uh, you know uh, just like God brought in that person he's taking him away from that place God will surely bring uh, someone else to fill in that role so don't be insecure uh, don't fight against it don't be disappointed just bless people let them go and God will bring somebody uh, else appropriate to help uh, or to fill in that uh, role or that vacuum that is uh, that is left empty there okay uh, flattery don't accept it don't give uh, do not give it uh, you know uh, people can uh, flatter us by saying different things about if you're a worship leader uh, you know how well you lead worship how anointed you are if you're a preacher teacher you know, leading a Bible study group prayer warrior uh, you know they can praise you and uh, they can flatter you um, you know when they do that uh, just uh, you know just give the glory and honor uh, to God okay just thank them and uh, you know politely people like just thank them uh, but in your heart just give glory and honor to God and you can also say okay all glory and honor and praise to God uh, uh, why do you need to do that because you know uh, uh, when we continually receive flattery from people and then comes a person uh, who gives you one uh, criticism not so-called criticism or some area you can improve or some area they have seen people in that same uh, uh, in that same position in that same uh, you know whether it's a worship team or a, a musician or somebody who's a prayer warrior uh, they can they, they would have come you know from some other church and they said you know in, in that in that church or you know I went to this church and I just observed this uh, they did things this way they did things that way and I really liked 
liked it. I'm just giving you as a suggestion. And, uh, you know, if you're a person who's constantly used to flattery, you know, not, a, you know, uh, uh, you come to a place where you're not willing to take uh, suggestions from people, you're not willing to take, um, you know, correction, uh, then it'll become very difficult for you. Okay, so, you know, be in a place where, um, uh, even when people give you those, uh, you know, flatter you, uh, just give the glory to God, uh, just thank them, give them the glory to God, uh, so that you'll be in a place where you're also open to corrections, uh, uh, to suggestions for improvement, um, uh, and also how, uh, when people tell you how you can do things better, you know, you'll be welcoming it uh, of it and you will take it on, and that will basically help you um, uh, improve. Okay, uh, like Psalms chapter 115 verse 3 says, Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but your name give glory because of your mercy, because of your uh, truth. So when people flatter you, you know, give God the glory and honor because we know that it's not uh, us, it is um, uh, it is God who is working in and through us. And we know what kind of vessels we are and how God is basically uh, pouring out his anointing and basically uh, using us. Okay. The next thing is you can listen to people's ideas, but you make up your own um, uh, decision. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there are times when uh, God gives you different ideas, thoughts, suggestions. Uh, you can share it with the team. Uh, you know, there are few people who will uh, take it. There are there will be few people who would, you know, who would who would not want to, uh, you know, uh, sign up for it, or uh, they would think that it's not an idea, a good idea, suggestion. But if you've heard from God, you know that it is uh, what God wants you to do. Uh, and there are few people who stand by you, who you know they hear from God. They also say yes, you know, we sense this is from God. You know, just go about. Uh, uh, doing it. Uh, people can give you ideas and suggestions. Uh, some uh, is in alignment with what God has called you as a leader, uh, giving you the vision to do. Uh, you can take it on. But there are some ideas and suggestions uh, which, uh, you know, do not align or go along with what God has called you to do or the vision, the plan and purpose he's given. Uh, then just listen to those ideas and suggestions and go with what God has asked you to do because ultimately you're not here to please man, but uh, uh, you're here to do what God has called you to uh, do. Okay, uh, do not permit anyone uh, or any individual to control you. Uh, you know, there are people uh, in uh, the teams, uh, if you're a head, you're leading a volunteer team or you're a pastor or you are a head of an organization, you know, uh, you have people in your team who are established uh, business people, or uh, rich people, famous people, uh, intellectuals, um, you know, uh, they try to use every opportunity to influence the leader the pastor uh, in a nice way uh, but they're basically trying to control the pastor tell the pastor what he should be doing what they should not be doing leader what they should be doing what they should not be doing uh, some of them may be sincere some of them may mean well but you know however their approach their motivation is uh, wrong um, uh, because they have experienced um, you know uh, fame or they've experienced uh, 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 you know uh, uh, you know they have done well in in the in the secular world uh, it and uh, you know they're leaders and they, they feel they're entitled to uh, control things even in church uh, or in the ministry uh, but that can be wrong so you know listen to their suggestions uh, you know um, but you don't have to be controlled uh, by anything and everything uh, that they um, uh, say okay take their ideas inputs but finally the decision that uh, you need to make as a need leader because you're accountable to God for the vision that he's uh, uh, given to you or if you're a pastor you're accountable to the pulpit and to the ministry of the church that God has entrusted to uh, you at the same time you know uh, you know, we could also uh, help these people, intellectuals, those in the business field, rich people, famous people, equip them and how they can be better, uh, 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 you know, uh, stewards of what God has entrusted to them, how they can extend God's kingdom in the secular world, in the business world, uh, in the intellectual world, how they can um, uh, 
you know, uh, bring in God's kingdom uh, and his kingdom reign, rule, presence, uh, wherever God has uh, established uh, uh, them. Okay. Um, uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, uh, when you're in leadership, uh, you're not only accountable to God, but you're also accountable to your family. And also you're accountable to, uh, you know, uh, uh, leaders above you, uh, those who are in the governing and regulatory uh, body. So our lives must uh, uh, be transparent, uh, should be open uh, enough for anyone to examine anything about us. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, any area where they can question us, we can answer them with a clear uh, uh, conscience. Okay. Having said that, you know, there are also super spiritual people in our church, uh, you know, uh, prophets, uh, prayer warriors, uh, and, you know, they come and they try to influence the leader uh, by saying, you know, thus says the Lord, or this is what the Lord has spoken to me. Uh, and they try to be uh, an intermediary between uh, the past or the leader and um, God okay it's good to hear what uh, God is speaking to these people uh, whatever God is speaking to these people uh, would all be in alignment with what God has speaking to you and giving you the leader uh, who's he's given you the vision the direction the leading so it will be alongside uh, that uh, so you know um, listen to them uh, pray about whatever prophecies whatever they saying, you know, thus says the Lord, what's what God spoke to me. You take it before God, ask him. And uh, if uh, the Holy Spirit is, um, you know, affirming that, then you can move ahead. But, uh, you know, don't uh, be submitted to uh, all of these prayer volumes, uh, you know, uh, or those, um, uh, you know, those who are um, prophets. Uh, intercessors, prophetic people, uh, you know, don't make decisions based on their prophetic words or revelations. You are uh, in a place of accountability before God. Uh, God will speak to you as well, affirm things, what is also coming from other people, and then uh, go ahead with what, uh, you know, sense God is leading you and uh, guiding you. Okay. Hand spiritual ones uh, with uh, caution you know there are people uh, who uh, who are in a volunteer teams uh, you know uh, some of them who are uh, doing various roles and responsibilities in the church uh, sometimes when we tell them to do some things um, uh, you know they say that uh, you know this is what God spoke to me uh, or I will do as the Lord leads uh, and this is actually a cover-up of their own desire for their own independence and their own insubordination. They don't want to be under the leadership. They want to do whatever they think, whatever they sense, whatever they feel is um, right. And they can come across as really super spiritual people. You know, I I, I, I have an example in one of our teams. Uh, we have, uh, I noticed this person who was super spiritual um, and uh, would always say, you know, uh, would, would not speak up much, but would always uh, uh, find him, I, I would find him not aligning himself with what, you know, what we are doing as a team. Uh, uh, but he would say, you know, uh, the Lord spoke to me, the Lord told me this, the Lord told me that. If you question him, why are you doing this this way? He said, this is what I sense, this is what I prayed about, this is what God told me to do. And I remember once, uh, you know, uh, uh, we were, in, uh, you know, uh, it was in children's church. We were just uh, together, you know, there was classes going on. And the Holy Spirit was telling me, go and sit in that class, go and sit in that class. And I was like, Holy Spirit, how can I just go and interrupt and sit in that class? Because as a leader, does that look good? I'm just going and sitting and, uh, uh, you know, it's trying to judge that leader, what, uh, the teacher, what will the teacher feel? And I was walking up and down, the Holy Spirit saying, go and sit in that class. And then, and finally I obeyed the Holy Spirit and I went and sat in that class. And I was shocked because um, we were all, you know, following a particular topic of the curriculum that we were all doing. Uh, but this specific teacher who I told you about, you know, was teaching totally something totally different, a totally different topic. And I was quite shocked and I was quite saddened in my heart. And uh, I didn't interrupt the class. I just got up and then after class, uh, you know, uh, the person himself said, I want to, I want to speak to you. I said, yes, even I want to speak to you. And then the person said, you know, uh, 
I I just sensed uh, God telling me uh, to teach this topic, and I was like, you know, uh, okay. But then I said you should have discussed that with me. You should have at least shared it with me. Then I just uh, gave him this example. I said, uh, now you know there are two teachers in this class. One Sunday, one just imagine one teacher is talking about Holy Spirit. And the other Sunday, you're teaching them about parables. Then how will the children coordinate? One Sunday, Holy Spirit. One Sunday, parable. What if pastor does that in um, in the adult church? If one Sunday is going to be teaching us about the gifts of the Spirit, the next Sunday is talking about parables. The third Sunday comes back about another speak about another gifts of the sun, uh, uh, Spirit, and the fourth Sunday is talking about parables. Will it be able to even correlate in our minds as adults? And we are here teaching children. And the person kept saying, you know, this is what God is speaking to me. This is what God is telling me to do. And then as a leader, I said, no, sorry, we cannot have this going. If you would like, you please teach, uh, you know, the topic that we are following. Uh, otherwise, you can make a decision. See, that was so sad. But somebody here who's so super spiritual, uh, who's saying that, you know, uh, this is what uh, God spoke to me. This is what God showed me to teach the children. That was very sad to hear because, uh, you know, if the person is not going to be aligning themselves to the vision, the direction, uh, the guidance of what every everyone else is doing as a team, then that person is actually saying, you know, God spoke to me or God told me to do this. It's like, uh, you know, they're trying to assert their own independence, their own insubordination uh, as a cover up as you know, God is just telling me or God is speaking to me. Okay, we'll stop here. We'll come back after our break and uh, we'll continue. If you have any questions, you can, in the meantime, post it up in the chat section. We'll meet at 10.02 because I have uh, gone two minutes uh, over time. So we'll meet at 10.02. Thank you, everyone. See you after the break.